Carpenter. And I, I must say, I'm a tremendous admirer of your work. Your book, Sex and Your Teenagers, was such a help to me with my 16-year-old daughter. Well, thank you. Oh, right. How many times have you heard that? Never enough. It's what keeps me going. Hmm. <clears throat> Mel, I didn't know that you were a friend of Dr. Maud. Oh, I, I'm, uh, I'm deeply attached to her. <laughs> really? How long have you known him? <laughs> Since birth. <laughs> Vicki, uh, I'm sorry. This is my mother, uh, Mary Hayes, <clears throat> a.k.a. the aforementioned Dr. Yes, Maud. Boylan is my maiden name. Maud is my middle name. As pseudonyms go, it's uh, not terribly exotic, but it gets the job done. Mel's friends have always called me Mary. Well, in that case, it's a, a double pleasure to meet you, <laughs> Harry. Thank you. Uh, Vicky's uh, my boss at the Banner. She is ah. the best publisher I have ever had, bar none. I suspect he says that to all his publishers. He certainly does not. Neither behind their back nor to their faces. Well, then I'm flattered. Thank you. What is this? They're springing you from the joint today? Oh, yeah. We're just waiting on the limo. Yeah. Isn't it incredible that they still ask you to wait for a wheelchair? I'm trying to convince this man to come back to the Palace Hotel so I can keep an eye on him for a few days. Good luck. <laughs> Hello, Vicky. Dorian. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And you, Mary? I'm splendid. I, I must thank you again for a remarkable evening. Yes, it was quite pleasant. Mel, I just saw Larry. He's released you? Uh, yeah, it looks like it. I think you people at the Banner have done a bang-up job. So to speak. On that series of yours on the teenage pregnancy. Well, thank you very much. Yes, it's a subject dear to my mother's heart. <laughs> yes, well, I started the first free clinic exclusively for teenagers in the Bronx 30 years ago. Uh, Will you ever <laughs> forget that party? <laughs> Never. So, uh, <clears throat> when do we eat? Soon. I'd like to hear about the party. <laughs> Mel still has nightmares about it. Uh, it was uh, my first date with Muriel, and it was almost my last. Oh, <clears throat> what happened? Piffle. Well, uh, Mayor had uh, got the place up and running, and she was moving on to something else that would get her in trouble with the Cardinal. <laughs> and um, her colleagues decided to throw her a farewell party. I made the mistake of showing up with Muriel to pay my respects. We uh, walk in, and the, the clinic was decorated with uh, what appeared to be balloons, but on closer examination, were not. The uh, cake was festooned with a singular display of birth control devices. <clears throat> I took one look at Muriel's face, and I thought I wanted to sink right into the floor. Oh, it was a glorious cake. Yeah, it was um, unique. <laughs> And then everybody started inhaling the helium from the, the, from the balloons. Yes. Yeah. And making like Donald Duck. Yeah, not everyone. You. Oh. <laughs> right. So, Dad, what do you think about the Eagles' chances next week, huh? Everybody said it cannot be done. And you and Clint are doing it. Doing what? Working together. Side by side, day after day, long after you got a divorce. <laughs> well, I think Mel can testify to the fact that it's uh, <clears throat> not all roses. <laughs> the, yep. uh, the words knock down, drag out come to mind. <laughs> but you always get the job done. Well, yes, because uh, despite our um, differences, uh, we are very aware that the uh, work has to come first. Well, absolutely, the work is sacred. And beyond that, your relationship is... Uh... A work in progress. It's really a remarkable achievement. Two people, divorced, working amicably together, without any past sexual issues getting in the way. Do you know, I would just love to interview both of you for my new book. Possible? <laughs> Shrimp puff? Uh, oh, excuse me, I'll get that. Mary! Oh, have you been standing there long? I'm sorry. Please come in. I didn't want to break your concentration. Oh, no, 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 no problem at all. Come in. Now sit down. I, uh, I was under the impression that you were going to call me yesterday. Have you had second thoughts? Thoughts, third, fourth thoughts. Mm -hmm. I'm really surprised, Vicky. Actually, 
I'm surprised that I even considered consulting you. After all, I am your son's employer and friend, and, and hopefully we've become friends too. Well, since when did friendship preclude a frank discussion about sex? But if you want me to back off, just say so. Yeah, I do. I really do. At the same time, don't pay any attention to me. How's that for mixed signals? I understand perfectly. <laughs> so, what are we going to do about the elephant that's in the room? <laughs> well, I have been trying most unsuccessfully just to ignore it. Define it. Sex, in general. Oh, that would include medical textbooks and pornographic films. It's just way too broad. But comfortably generic. Is comfort the objective? It has been for a while now, yeah. I think that's the problem. Well, it may be part of it. But it's interesting. When we begin to experience discomfort, it often signals truth. Okay, uh, okay. All right, the truth is, uh, I am very, very afraid of sex. That's still too broad a response. Could you be more specific? You don't by any chance happen to know anything about my history, do you? How could I? I don't know, I thought maybe Mel or God knows, for all I know, I could have been the subject of articles in some of your psychiatric journals. Well, Mel is extremely circumspect, and you wouldn't have been identified in a case study, even if I had read it. So assume that I know nothing about you. OK. Well, then, the first thing you should know is that most of the time, I wish I knew nothing about me. I care about identity disorder. It's not a secret. I've suffered from it for years and years, ever since I was a little girl. At uh, various times, it has practically destroyed my life and my family. And I have been in therapy for that a very long time. And apparently, I am now integrated. But I do not take my mental health for granted. Well, we have very complicated minds, and they protect us in unusual ways. Um, were you abused? Yes. It's a common trigger, particularly incest. Yes. It uh, was my father. He's deceased? Yes, he is. I killed him. Uh, well, I d yes, I did. I killed him. One of my alters killed him. And when did you realize that? Oh, uh, I guess about um, two years ago in therapy. You see, the whole thing started after my late husband Sloan died. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with all the details now. Suffice to say that uh, I eventually came face to face with my father's abuse of me and the circumstances surrounding his death. But you've successfully reintegrated. Well, not without cost. Was sex a problem before that? No. No, I mean, at least not that I was ever aware of. And then afterward, well, my husband had died, so it wasn't something I had to deal with, so I just, I didn't. What changed that? To Clint Buchanan mm -hmm. for, well, a number of years. And I divorced him, and I married Sloane Carpenter. But Sloane died very shortly after we were married. The thing is that through all of that, Clint and I really remained friends. And uh, last week, I mean, we were alone one evening, and he very much wanted to make love to me. Was that entirely his idea? No. 
<laughs> no, I, I can't say that it was. I guess maybe I was looking for a quick fix. I don't know. Now tell me, was he able to satisfy you physically in the past when you were married? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, what made you think that you were ready for that step? Do you know something? It never, ever occurred to me that it would be a problem. See, Clint and I have been getting much closer uh, recently, mostly because I've been pushing him to deal with his anger relating to our divorce and my remarriage. He told you he was angry? Oh, no. No, no, no. He, he would never do that, ever. That's the problem. He has been so kind and so supportive of me and the children, totally businesslike at work. And frankly, given the emotional storm I had been through, I was very happy for all that peace and quiet. You know, up to a point. And then we, we just got stuck at that point. And you wanted to get past it? Sure. So I kind of goaded him into losing his temper. Oh, all in the name of honesty. And I lost my temper in public, which is not my style or Clint's. But it broke the ice. Or at least so I thought. And everything was fine. <laughs> right up until the point where he kissed me. And then that ice was very much in evidence again. On whose part? Uh, on mine. It was as if everything in me just shut down. And Clint was very, very nice about it, but I felt like such a total hypocrite. I mean, here I am forcing him to confront his feelings. And I absolutely could not deal with mine. It put you on the spot. Yeah. All right, now, tell me, what are your feelings for Clint? I'm not sure. Well, what do you believe his feelings are for you? I think he loves me, yeah. That actually makes it all harder for me to figure out where I am. Do you really think you can help me? Well, I can't make any promises. But I certainly would like to try. Would you give me permission to get in touch with your therapist? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Um, actually, um, the, the woman I worked with during the reintegration was Susanna Hannon. Susanna. Um, but she lives in Switzerland now, and... Uh, I'll give you a phone number, though, okay? Well, you are in therapy treatment with somebody else right now. Yeah, uh, Dr. Helen Fletcher. I'll Helen give you her number, Fletcher. too. Anna and Helen is there. Um, actually, I'll call them this morning, and I will uh, give my consent. Well, they may want that in writing. That's not a problem. And if you were to change your mind... Oh, I won't. I, I'm sure that the first step was the hardest. Oh, not by a long shot. If Antonio... I know how much I appreciate you agreeing to see me, you know, uh, uh, after hours. Oh, it's no trouble at all. <laughs> and since my material and my equipment have arrived, we can dive right in. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> yes, I can tell. <laughs> Uh, actually, the sooner we get started, uh, the better, really, because uh, I'm sure that you can guess. This is absolutely terrifying for me. Well, of course it's terrifying. Sex therapy isn't like a sports car. It's not something you jump into for the fun of it. <laughs> I mean, the name alone uses two of the scariest words in the English language, sex and therapy. <laughs> Throw in taxes, you got everything covered. <laughs> oh, you're going to be splendid to work with. I am looking forward to this. Oh, I wish I could share your enthusiasm. Well, zeal isn't mandatory, only willingness. By the way, sit down. I spoke to Susanna Hannon in Switzerland. You've been busy, have you? Well, being that she was the therapist that oversaw your recovery from DID. Mm -hmm the reintegration of your altars and so forth. I felt Susanna could give me an overall comprehensive view of your history and the progress that you've made, which, by the way, is extraordinary. Really? You think so? 
Vicki, you have no idea how many people I have dealt with that have collapsed under the weight of a burdensome past. You are obviously a very courageous and strong woman to have been so resilient. And I venture to say that you've got what it takes to make the work that we're about to tackle pay off. Fight, team, fight. <laughs> we're essentially, you know, going to be looking at one problem. Your current lack of libido. Current? For quite some time. <laughs> well, it doesn't have to go on forever. Here. Oh, thank you. I, I uh, hope it doesn't. And the first thing we're going to do is establish the source of the problem, whether it is emotional or physical or a combination of both, because loss of desire is quite different from loss of sensation. Okay, uh, how do you go about trying to find out which it is? Uh, I, I think I'd, I'd like to just start from scratch with you, you know. So I'm, I'm going to say, I, I don't really know. All I know is how I have felt for the last year or so. Well, how have you felt sexually? <laughs> Short-circuited is a good word that comes to mind. Disconnected. Yes, disconnected. I mean, it's not that I'm not interested in sex, because I am. I mean, the idea of... Uh, I, I had not really uh, made up my mind that I was, in fact, going to make love with Clint up in the cabin uh, that, that night. But I did think that if I had wanted to, I could. <clears throat> and then uh, it just turned out that there was no, no spark. No arousal, in other words. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, and, I, and I guess I've been that way for a while. I don't know. All right, then. Let's just back up a bit. Why don't we explore what did rouse you in the past? Now, Vicki, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and let your mind drift back in time, back to those early sexual responses, back to the first purely physical sensations. Are you getting anything? All right, then, let's try something else. <clears throat> let's, um, why don't you try to remember what might have stimulated those early sexual feelings? I can't do this. I can't, I'm sorry. You can't do what? Uh, I can't, uh, say it. Try. It's just... It's not working, you see. Ever since I recovered the memory of what my father did to me, uh, I just kind of shut down, you know, whenever, whenever I even get close to any of those early feelings. Um, instead of recollection, I, I feel shame and I feel guilt. I'm sorry. Don't be. That's what abuse does. It cuts people off from and turns them against their most natural, God-given impulses. And besides, Vicky, you're way ahead of the game. Oh, really? How's that? Well, I mean, you're aware of what's going on inside of you and you're willing to communicate it. If you can maintain this level of honesty, I think that you will be greatly gratified at how quickly we get to the issue the heart of the issue at hand. Well, I guess the heart uh, would be very nice, but I think for now I prefer to stay in the here and now. Instead of any forays into the past, I just feel a lot safer. All right, all right. The here and now is good. <laughs> uh, we'll just take a different approach. Oh, boy. <laughs> What's that? Well, there's a method that we can use that will help us establish a, a sexual point of reference, a technique that will give us some idea of what arouses you and to what degree. What technique is that? If you can't laugh. It's been designed so that it can help us with this evaluation process that we've been discussing. Now, I'll just put it in there. And I'm 
going to hand you these. There's the remote. And I want you to jot down what, if anything, arouses you. <clears throat> and to what degree, if possible. Uh, you want me to watch this now, here? Yes, if you're willing. Yeah, I suppose I am. Good. Well, just begin whenever you're ready. And feel free to stop if you get to feeling too uncomfortable. Okay. In days of... Uh, with you in the room, it sure is. Oh, believe me. By the time we're through, I'm going to seem to you as if I'm just another piece of furniture around here. Oh. But I understand. And seeing as I haven't become a hassock yet. <laughs> here. I'm going to give you this. You, uh, you want me to take this home? Absolutely. I want you to find a quiet time and curl up by yourself and give it another shot. Okay. Okay. Any reaction to what you did see? I have to tell you that I am absolutely shocked. In what way? Well, I mean that would do that with a camera on them? You mean you've never seen anything like this before? Is that a terribly revealing confession? Oh, Vicky, everything everybody does is revealing. Just relax, you're in good company. <laughs> well, thank you. You know, Mary, I, I have to tell you, this sort of thing was never discussed in my family. What sort of thing is that? Sex? Pleasure? Physical needs? What? All of the above. Now, we had a very glossy, very proper veneer to the Lord behavior. Of course, underneath all that good breeding and impeccable manners was unspeakable obscenity. Yes. Which not only cast a pall over the most natural and pleasurable aspects of being human, but seems to have precluded it altogether. Well, I guess, looking at it from that perspective, I'm going backwards, not forwards. Oh, Vicky, please be patient. Give yourself time, and with hard work, we can change things, turn them around. Do you honestly believe that? I'm not in the habit of wasting my time or my patient's time. I will be a good patient, a good student. I will do my homework. <laughs> Although, I have to tell you, I've never had a teacher give me this kind of an assignment before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll do just fine. Good luck. <laughs> Christian downstairs? No. Something happened? Yes. You want to tell me about it? Why do you have a pillow over your head? Because there's no point in asking not to be born. That bad, huh? Worse. Much, much worse. Well, you want to give me a blow by blow? Ah! Jessica! Sweetheart, I don't think I can help you if you're gonna beat around the bush like this. This has got to be the worst moment in my whole entire life. Well, what on earth did Christian do to upset you like this? He put a tape in the VCR. He didn't. I don't get it. Okay, I was in the kitchen getting us some popcorn, right? We were gonna watch Romeo and Juliet, I thought. 
we were going to watch Romeo and Juliet. I got it from the stack of videos right next to your TV. <sighs> but when I came back from the kitchen, <clears throat> I saw this. Um, oh my God, you're not gonna believe what I saw, Mom. It was the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my whole entire life. I wanted to die right there. The video store made a very, very, very big mistake. Oh, Jessica. No. No, the video store did not make a big mistake, honey. I did. That tape was mine. What happened? You, you watched that oh, tape? No, no, I did. Well, I saw a few minutes of it. No, that's... Is, is that what sex is like? Because I... No, no, no. Oh, honey, sit down. No, I have... I have tried to explain to you so many times. When two people love each other, sex is, is a wonderful, it's a beautiful, it's a blessed thing. It's the ideal. Yeah, well, that tape was definitely not the ideal. No. Did, did you rent that? Me oh, yourself? no! No! Oh, brother. Um, I have to talk to you, okay? Honey, the tape was given to me by my therapist, Dr. Maud. Now, this has nothing, nothing to do with you, I swear to you, okay? I went to see Dr. Maud for myself. She's going to try to help me get in touch uh, with my sexual feelings. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I do have them. I mean, I'm not that old. <laughs> Unfortunately, they became rather more complicated after I found out what happened to me when I was a little girl. You mean? Yes, when I found out what my father had done to me, okay? Sweetheart, as a result of recollecting the abuse, it's like I took all my feelings of a sexual nature and put them in a little drawer somewhere inside myself, you know, and I guess I seem to have lost the key. I, I you know, that was fine for a while because I was, I needed healing. But now I've, I've decided that I don't really want to spend the rest of my life being a totally non-sexual person. Does, um, Dad? Have no, no, no. I mean, Daddy knows that I'm seeing Dr. Maud, and, and he, I mean, he certainly would like me to resolve the problems, you know, but I'm not doing this for Daddy, okay? I'm doing this for me. Doing what? Hm. Well, seeing a therapist. You know, Dr. Maud. I had my first session with her today, and um, she gave me that tape as, as a kind of a, an exercise, you know. Sweetheart, you know, she's a lot more than just a writer. She's a doctor. She's a real doctor. She's a clinical psychiatrist. And she just wanted me to, you know, look at the tape and record my responses. Uh, Mom, that tape, that tape is pornographic. Well, um, they, they refer to it as explicit. Yeah, well, whatever it is, it's disgusting. <clears throat> it, it's graphic, okay? And it's not subtle. Oh, honey, it's just plain old sex. That's all it is. That's the problem, you see. It has no emotional content whatsoever. It has nothing to do with making love. It, it's not even an approximation of what one can experience when, when everything is right. So this is why you make such a big deal about me and sex, right? Oh, baby, I try very hard not to make a big deal about it. No, no, it's okay. I just never understood until now. You don't want anything to happen to me so that I'll have to tuck it away inside me someplace, right? No, I surely don't. But I don't want you to have to hide away your feelings either. So if Dr. Maud is going to help you, I'm glad. But that 
tape. Oh, I... Honey, sweet, sweetie, forget about the tape. It's really not important. You know, it's just a tape. Believe me when I tell you, when the time is right and all the elements are in place, when you have trust and respect and love and joy in each other, making love is a wonderful experience.